can that happen in the natural man? How can that happen? This is not supposed to happen when we're raptured, saints. This is supposed to happen while we're here. And folks keep lying to you and telling you that you can't be perfect. Oh, we're not perfect. No, you're not perfect. Didn't the word of God say, be ye perfect? For I am perfect? The problem is, is they're judging from the natural perspective that we cannot be perfect. Of course we can't be perfect in the natural man. But in a spiritual man, we can. They have not arrived at the point in their life where they can be perfect in Christ. Read the book of 1 James where it says that we cannot sin when we have his seed in us. And folks have the idea that we're going to keep committing sin. But the Bible says we don't have to. Because we have his seed in us, which is his spirit. That's in 1 John. It is his desire that we, when we stand before him, that we are not judged with the ungodly. And yet, there are folks that are saying that we can't be perfect, that are going to stand before Christ and say to him, Lord, Lord, have I not done this in your name and done that in your name and done all these great things, Lord? I mean, I did all these for you. And Jesus is going to say, I don't even know who you are. Get away from me. And cast them in the outer darkness. That's the word of God. That's not my word. And these are people who... Who, who say they are God? Praise the Lord. And so we got the natural man and we got the spiritual man who are both at war with one another, trying to form in us the godliness that it thinks that we must have. It's always talking to us, saints, always talking to us through our thoughts. And that's why the Holy Ghost wants to change and renew our minds. Because he understands that we rely on our experiences and our thoughts to help us through our life. He understands that. He understands that. And we must learn to draw nigh to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from us. Draw closer to God. Give ourselves over to the mission of the Holy Ghost to form in you the righteousness of God. To form in you the testimony of Jesus Christ. To clean you up so that none of your righteousness remains in you. So that you can be delivered from your problems. So that you can be delivered from everything that you go through in life. We read that last week in Ezekiel and all over the Old Testament that the righteousness of God will deliver us. And we also read that it will keep us from these things. The righteousness of God. So if we really look at that, our righteousness is what causes the troubles. Our righteousness causes our problems in life, causes us to become bankrupt, causes us to not to have money in our pocket, causes us to, uh, uh, to suffer in our marriage, causes us to suffer in our relationship, causes us, it is our righteousness because we are judging how we ought to do this thing. Whereas the righteousness of God will keep us from those things. So that there is what? No law that can judge us. That there is no one that can judge us. When we have the righteousness of God, they cannot judge us. There is no sin that they can mark us with when we have the righteousness of God. But when we have our righteousness and some of God's righteousness, they can say, well, this is your... What they're going to do is they're going to pick out stuff. This is your problem, this is your problem, this is your problem. They're not going to look at the righteousness of God. They're going to look at your bad stuff. Huh? And so God does not want that to happen to us. He wants us to be free. Who wants to be free? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Amen. I know I want to be free. Because I do not want to stand before Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, I'm going to say this. Repeat these words after me. I will not, I will not stand, stand with the ungodly, with the ungodly to, be judged with them. to be judged with them. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand. And I want to say this before I close. Many of the problems that saints have today the sickness, the disease, and all the things that the world is suffering today is because they are in their own righteousness. They have not learned to give over to the Holy Ghost. They have not learned it yet. And you have to learn how to do that. But you need patience. You need patience. I'm telling you, you need patience. You need patience to trust the Lord. You need patience. Because the natural man, why do you need patience? Because the natural man is slow to receive from God. That's why you need patience. Because he got to fix this. <laughs> Isn't that something? God has to fix our thoughts. He has to work on those thoughts and form those thoughts. Since the natural man can't receive spiritual things, and he gave us of his spirit so we can make that connection. And so now we have to yield over to the spirit to work on us. And so what the spirit of God in us will do is talk to us. Through our circumstance, our life. He will show us. He will lead us. And what will happen, we, he will give us new experiences. These new experiences will come into here in our thoughts. And we will lend ourselves to these experiences. And so when they're formed in us and, 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 and they're tested, now they're in us because now they've been tested and we pass the test, right? And so now we have been formed, renewed in our mind concerning that issue, but we got others. Concerning that problem. Now the devil can't mess with us in that problem. He has done what? He has broken that yoke. You see? He has freed us from that yoke. But there are many other yokes. Come unto me all ye that labor and heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. There are many yokes in our lives. Many areas of our lives that can create failure in us. That we have to lend over to the Spirit of God to form in us and reshape our thoughts about them and renew us in them. And so many of the problems that we have today in our bodies are a result of our own righteousness. Is Christ a failure when it comes to healing? Of course not. Who's the failure? We are. We are. To not be a failure, we have to yield over to the Spirit of God. And guess what's going to happen? People are going to look at your life and they're going to see you as a success in everything that you lay your hands on. He, what did he say in Deuteronomy 28? He bless you going in and you're coming out. Everything you lay your hands on, he's going to bless. That doesn't come through your righteousness. It comes through his. Praise the Lord. And so when people look at you and they see the success in your life, they know there's something different about you. And they can't put their finger on it because a natural man can't receive the things of the Spirit. So they want it. And now you have a testimony to deliver to them. Amen.